All right, listen up, everybody. I've got a really exciting show for you today, so let's jump right on in. Up first, the latest thing Americans are being asked to do in this COVID reality may actually surprise you, but many say it's just another sign of the times. COVID-19 waivers? It's just not hand sanitizer and temperature checks at the door. Some businesses and institutions are passing out the paperwork. From schools to salons, sports leagues to vacation destinations, COVID-19 waivers are popping up at more places and becoming very much a part of our new normal. While liability and injury waivers are nothing new, waivers for a communicable disease are. So now, even Mickey Mouse is joining the practice. In a disclaimer on Walt Disney World website, Visitors are warned that they voluntarily assume all risks related to exposure to COVID-19 and require visitors reserving tickets to acknowledge its COVID-19 liability waiver and assumption of risk. Some elementary schools offering in-person learning, like in Lexington, Kentucky, asked parents to sign a waiver for their return to classroom learning, and about 350 families did. But should you sign on the dotted line? And if you give your John Hancock, does it hijack your rights if something goes wrong and you do get sick with the virus? Joining us now to tell us if we're actually signing our life away when it comes to these COVID-19 waivers is attorney and legal expert Carissa Kranz. Welcome, Carissa. Thanks for joining us today. You know, legal documents of any kind, of course, all that kind of fine writing and fine points can intimidate the heck out of a lot of people. What exactly is a COVID-19 waiver? Mm -hmm. I actually think you used the great word there, intimidate a lot of people. A COVID-19 liability waiver is going to be put in place as a deterrent to intimidate people from bringing a lawsuit. Uh, as the video showed, liability waivers is nothing new. It's a contractual agreement between a releaseor, which is the customer, and a releasee, the business owner, in which the customer is basically and essentially waiving their right to sue, assuming all risks and responsibility for any injuries that that may happen by delivery of or acceptance of the services by the business, regardless of the nature of the services or the nature of the business. So in the time of a pandemic and COVID-19, a COVID-19 liability waiver is essentially asking people to sign away their right to sue and sign away their right to any responsibility and legal liability of the business for opening their doors and entering their premises to take part in the services that they offer. Let's say, for example, you don't follow proper protocol and I become infected, can I still sue you? Even though I signed this uh, waiver? You always have the right to sue. Access to court is a fundamental right. What's going to change is whether or not it'll be a successful lawsuit, and that will change and be determined based on the facts. These liability waivers are essentially uh, raising the burden. So now, before COVID-19, uh, ordinary negligence was what was in play. But these liability waivers are protecting businesses, adding an extra layer of protection, and basically saying you can be ordinarily negligent, but you can't be grossly negligent. You can't have willful or intentional misconduct. Okay, you used a big word, negligence, and we hear this very often when mm -hmm. we watch these legal dramas. Let's distinguish between negligence and what is considered to be gross negligence. Negligence, in effect, is um, when there's an unsafe condition caused by a business's failure to exercise reasonable care or an omission that they shouldn't have omitted. It's about having a reasonable duty that was breached. For example, a hair salon um, might require masks to be worn by customers, but failing to enforce the CDC guideline of wearing those masks might be considered negligent on behalf of the salon. Gross negligence, on the other hand, is a willful, intentional, total disregard for the customer's safety despite a known risk. So what does that mean? That means that, say, an owner of a gym has personal trainers and members of the gym and say that the owner of the gym or the boss of the gym knows that one of the trainers is sick and as the legal representative of the gym the owner looks the other way and allows the trainer to train the member and the member gets sick with COVID-19. That would be willful misconduct and intentional disregard 
for the safety of the public. So that's the difference. It's one's ordinary negligence or like lack of reasonable care, maybe unintentionally ignoring the guidelines. And the other one is intentional, willful, grossly negligent. You know, and you're, what's gross, gross and, is a and, heightened level of negligence. And to button this point up, what you're saying is even if you sign one of these COVID-19 waivers, you still have grounds for something if it's gross negligence. Yes. So let me ask you, Carissa, mm -hmm. what should we be looking for when we're signing the dotted line? What exactly? You should consider, one, whether or not the language is simple and clear. Like, these are often handed to you on the spot. You don't have a chance to seek outside counsel. So when an ordinary person is reading it, is it simple and clear? Is it understandable? Um, second, when you're there, be vigilant. Look, inspect the premises. Are they following proper c protocol? Is there signage in place? Do you feel like you have to sign this waiver in order to enter the premises? All of that will be taken into play on whether or not it'll be enforceable. Um, another tip that you should consider is the importance of the service. So is it going to Disney World or is it going to a doctor? It comes down to, is this a service that I want? or is this a service that I need? If it's a service that I just want, then more likely it will be enforceable and you're assuming the risk. If it is a service that you need, like going to the doctor and they're forcing you to sign this in order to see the doctor when your life might be at stake and you need to see the doctor anyway, then the waiver may be less enforceable in a court of law because that's a service you need. Krista, this is great information. You know, a lot of schools, by the way, uh, are making parents uh, sign these waivers. There's a lot of confusion. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's important that people should know that even if you do sign these waivers, that does not mean that you've taken away your right down the road uh, to pursue a lawsuit in the event that something happens. Thanks for breaking down all the legalese and, of course, giving us Thanks all your expertise. Me. Thank you. All right. All right, let's move on.